Happy Thursday, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Rocketeer Minute, where each and every day, Monday through Friday, we go over one minute of the greatest motion picture that Walt Disney's ever made, the 1991 Joe Johnston-directed feature, The Rocketeer. I'm one of your hosts, Jim O'Kane of TVDads.com. And I'm Hal Ryan, an airplane nerd from the Experimental Aircraft Association. Whoa, 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 what, what is, what I'm is hearing that? something. You're listening to a special Billy Campbell episode on the Rocketeer Minute. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Campbell. Sigh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Here we are in the final 10 minutes, and, and we're yeah. here, of course, with uh, with the Rocketeer himself, Billy Campbell. Gosh, it, you know, so many things ending, including, well, <laughs> including our nemesis here uh, as he as he's going off to a rather fiery end. Billy, thanks for being on, on our show and continuing to, to hang in there. Oh, of course. <laughs> Through through flames and uh, uh, incredible gosh. to think, Jim, that we've done this ninety nine times. That's, yeah, <laughs> I, I can't even. I can't even. And, and, and we're talking about a Luft balloon, so go figure. You know, yes, neun and neunzig Luft balloon. Oh my goodness! Ah, wow. Watching some a lot of the magic of uh, ILM in this mm. uh, through the that, that model, and then uh, you know both the full size rigs, and and uh, we'll be we'll actually have somebody on from ILM uh, next week. Uh, to talk about some of the scenes at the end of this minute, where we're uh, we're seeing both uh, both the end of Neville and uh, and that gigantic uh, dirigible, which uh, I think we can talk about that. We we will talk about it in more detail. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that they had to do was build a second dirigible that didn't explode the right way. That's uh, right. I remember hearing about that. And uh, they had uh, kind of this, this, Disney decided they didn't need a second one; they'll just blow it up right the first time, and, and that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I gotta, I gotta say that I, I think the, I think these effects are. I mean, this is twenty, how many years ago now? Twenty. Twenty six. Twenty seven. Twenty six years ago now. These effects are are really, really not bad. Even even today, you know, you look at a lot of movies that are just ten years old, and you think, oh, but these are. Not bad. Yeah, I know. And it, it, there's so much going right in this in this scene. It, the lighting is perfect. You you guys look like you're in the middle of an inferno. Yeah. The, the wavering lights and the constant uh, cutting back and forth. Jennifer looking beautiful, putting out flames. Mm. Was doing, <laughs> doing a great job there, flapping at lights, I guess. <laughs> but again, a nice a nice touch because she's not the full on helpless damsel in distress. No. You know, and just I mean, just grabbing the. Uh, the uh, the flare gun, the Leucht pistol, was uh, was a nice touch. Even if firing such a thing off, uh, surrounded by balloons of hydrogen, may not be the smartest idea. Yeah, but it was a, it was a brave move. Yeah, yeah. But she, she's not showing fear. She's showing like anger and disgust at Neville. I mean, that, that right. whole expression on her face is like you idiot, and it, it's uh, and gumption. She's, just, she's got gumption. Yeah, yes. yeah. The dame's got gumption. <laughs> she does. Yeah, <laughs> she's a good kid. You know, I think she's going places. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand that he had to sound, you know, evil, evil Nazi agent, but this is one of the less inspiring uh, <laughs> German accents. It, it's bordering on Dracula. I just. <laughs> I want uh, to suck your rocket pack. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, yes, it was acting. Uh, it was <laughs> acting. It, it, I always struggle with that a little bit because. It's pointing out to us, okay, that Eng- that he's been faking English this whole time. But it's it's challenging to learn another language, speak it fluently, and then and then let your original accent sort of come back mm. into it. Mm. You know, it just seemed like once he's learned English, he's going to say he's going to speak English reflexively the best way he knows how. Yeah. But uh, well, that's okay. That's okay. He's- is he acting here? That's right. the thing. Yes, it's, it's, it's all acting. You know but what still, I thought? Wait, oh, go, go ahead, Billy. No, go, you first. No, I was just going to say, because I'm scrubbing through, and I'm and now he's going down in a fireball, and he's, is that this minute, or is that yes. the last? Yeah, that's this yeah, minute. Yeah, that's yeah, right. He's... And be that as it may, I'm scrubbing through this, this, him going down in a fireball, and he's coming right toward the camera. And I remember thinking when I saw the film, his face should have been... Just in the fireball, coming into close up at the camera, his face should have been like bubbling and burnt. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like uh, like Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of a thing. He yeah. was the Hollywood, you know, he was the Hollywood handsome guy, and then in inside the fire, the fire bubble going down toward the camera, he should have been like, 
yeah, yeah like he, he, Raiders. He, he even still he even still has hair and like yeah, hair is exactly. usually the first thing yeah, they go on exactly, a fire <laughs> exactly but and that and, the, and that perfect pencil mustache yeah, coming right at yeah. you 60 feet wide That's on the fair. screen <laughs> and it's it's interesting to me too that uh somehow the, the germans must have been making some additional progress with their rocket packs because otherwise how how does uh, how does neville sinclair just know how to expertly fly the thing <laughs> that's true you know he just that's sort of true. puts it on maybe he's watched cliff enough but uh but he just sort of steps right out there and and flies off and if it if it hadn't been for those meddling kids you know removing the yeah. uh removing the beamins <laughs> the from the yeah. uh, the 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 stop leak but well, we got to give it. we got to give it that. I mean, it's a sweet yeah. movie, and and uh, y- you just sort of have to uh, give it those things. Absolutely. Um, I have to ask an, ex- an aside. While you were working on the Rocketeer, how far away were you from Dracula at this point? Uh, not far. I think we, you know, we finished uh, shooting Rocketeer in in ninety one, um, and uh, I shot. Dracula started and right after Rocketeer, I think. Or, I mean, there might have been a, a bit of a, a little few months hiccup or something, but I think we started in '91 as well. Okay, yeah, I was just trying to figure out, you know, like getting the. You didn't. You didn't grow out your facial hair for that one. That was. Uh, that was. Uh, I did glue I, and glue I, and horse hair. No, well, years? I did actually grow out my f- facial hair, and um, because I knew I wanted uh, at least a mustache, and. Um, I remember, so it must have been some degree of, some amount of time later in 91. And I, I desperately wanted to have a mustache or something. And uh, I remember Francis uh, Coppola asking me to shave my mustache. And I'm like, ah, but, 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 but he'd be <laughs> great with a mustache and a little, you know, the pip underneath it. That's what I was gunning for. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I had a beard. So I started arguing for a beard because I thought if I argue for a beard, maybe, and then maybe, you know, he can, I can negotiate back to the mustache and the pip. And uh, he ended up saying, why, why don't you just shave it off bit by bit and we'll have a look at it. And I got down to the mustache and the pip and then he was like, I, I really kind of want to see you, you know, all American, like with a shaved face. So I eventually I had to shave my face. And then the first day of shooting, uh, I come into the stage and I'm, I'm in my wardrobe and stuff and I've got my shaved face. And I'm a little, you know, I'm, of course, excited to be there, but I'm, I'm a little dispirited because I wanted to be a, like a man, not have my baby face, you know. And uh, he looks at me and he goes... Ah, you look great. The costume's fantastic. He said, "But where's the mustache and the and the thing?" And I'm like, "But but 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 you had me shave them off." <laughs> he said, "I I liked it. I liked it. Go 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 have them put a mustache on you." So so I, yeah, you came back and you came back with like a barbershop quartet kind of mustache. Yeah, I came was... back with a big old mustache and a pip underneath my lip, and I thought, oh. Now I had to wear this glue thing to my face the whole time. And it was, it's horrible. It is horrible having <laughs> hair glued to your face. It really is a kind of a, kind of a subtle torture. Yeah. I would think the hair underneath as you're taking it off and I just helping you pull, pull the next mustache the out. The hair doesn't grow that fast to, to really have anything to do with it, you know, in, in the space of a day, but it's just, it's glued to your lip and it sort of immobilizes your mouth to a degree. And at the end of the day, they got to put spirit gum up under your nose and sort of dissolve mm. the stuff to get it off. And it's just horrible. I swore to myself, I would never ever wear fake hair on my face again. And some years later, they asked me to do a biblical epic, oh, biblical yeah. mini series in Morocco. <laughs> and I just had, for, I was like, I so desperately wanted to go to Morocco that I that I I just forgot all about the facial hair. Of course, I'm going to play Moses for goodness' sake, and I didn't even think about it. And and I spent half the movie with a with a what a, what amounted to a camel glued to my face. It was horrible. It was horrible. It, it's an it's a, we posted a picture of that on the on the website. Oh, we talked about that already. I'm sorry yeah, for boring. Couple, yeah, with no, no, no. It's fine. No, a couple. Uh, but I mean, if for folks uh, looking for it, go to a. Uh, 
rocketeerminute.com and s- scroll back through a couple episodes, and we have a great picture of Billy as Moses, as as a camel, oh, <laughs> camel a ridiculous. Holding, holding a camel under his under his lip. What yeah. a ridiculous <laughs> thing! A ridiculous wow. and torturous, torturous thing. Uh, I got anyway. I got one more question. Yeah. I got one more Dracula question. Mm-hmm. While we're while we're while we're in the neighborhood. Yeah. Did you did you get to keep the knife? I did not get to keep the knife. Oh, yeah. The that, knife wasn't that, all that great looking up close. It was one uh, of those movie things. It wasn't a genuine Bowie knife, I don't think. And and anyway, I don't really keep uh, keep uh, souvenirs. But uh, your, yeah. um, no, so I didn't didn't keep. Okay, well we'll we'll talk about that some some other time. <laughs> a lot of this is. Uh... You, you, through, through this movie, through this particular minute, you're reacting to uh, guys with lights, I guess, flashing mm-hmm. flashing lights in your face, and they're telling you, yeah, you can't see it. You can't believe it. You're awful, and you're horrified by the something or other. We finish, we've, we finished with the gondola set. You're, you're no longer in the, in the cab anymore. That's right. Uh, we're going visit, we're, we're to visit the roof again. <laughs> And oh, uh, it, the roof. That's right. We're gonna actually have the the people that uh, that made the made, made the thing blow up on uh, on next week. Oh, fantastic! Chat about that. Um, were you around when um, when Timothy was filming his uh, his big death scene up in, up in green screen land? Because I would think that would be about the same time that you were doing the the thing with the and rope. Quickly, no. uh, quickly, Jim. Sorry, but uh, Amy okay. uh, Young from ILM had written us reminding us that at this point in filmmaking they were blue screen still. Oh, correct. So, yes, yes. Not green screen, but yes, blue screen. They, yes. I, and I'm curious. We'll, we'll have to ask her again about when and why they changed changed the color. But I always remember the early Star Wars documentaries. It was always blue screens. Ooh, well, I but, think. But, I think I know this. I know this one. The, yes, uh, you in the back. The, <laughs> yes. <laughs> My uh, the uh, te- technical terms on it. Uh, blue screen was not uh, directly aligned with uh, RGB, which was digital, oh, digital sure. film image, imagery. And the G that if you're using a, a straight green, if you're just using that one part of the spectrum rather than the blue that is not a clear blue, it's easier to uh, to sort out spectrally uh, the particular green that they're so, using. So so that green is zero two fifty five zero. Then. Yeah, pretty much. Gotcha. That's that's where. But it is. I remember doing the the screen shot, and I have a very vivid memory of the cloth that we were hanging above on the ladder being green oh really maybe that was an early use of it, it could be it or this could have been, been right around the transition time we're gonna uh-huh. we're gonna have to ask this is this this is gonna fo- we're gonna have to focus on, there is on several an questions interesting egg knit yeah knit, uh, okay. knit to pick. yes <laughs> good good catch billy okay <laughs> anyway you were asking if billy was around when uh, when timothy was was filming his fireball sequence i here. yeah i don't uh, remember seeing timothy up at uh, we we went up to ilm to shoot the green screen i remember seeing the dirigible or zeppelin um and but I don't remember. I don't remember seeing Timothy up there at all. I'm curious that falling fireball scene. We see him coming at the camera. Is he? Uh, would you think he's being hoisted up toward a camera? I, I yeah, guess, no, or, actually, or do you know, Jim? He's he's being he's being lowered toward. He is the actually camera. being lowered, and so. it's uh, done at it's it's an undercranked camera, so it happens a little bit faster than real life. But yeah, he's he's being lowered on a, on a large set. One of the things that, as as Billy has r- forever ruined the movie, nobody ever <laughs> <laughs> nobody ever puts on the rocket pack. You just see them just finishing up That's putting right, on the rocket right. pack. At the beginning, at the beginning of this particular minute, we had or, or the the end of the previous minute, we saw him grabbing the rocket pack, and all of a sudden, he's just about to put the last strap on as, as he gets that uh, that leader hose. In. Although remember, he doesn't uh, have uh, Billy's uh, great jacket. And the epaulets to feed yeah. the straps through, yeah, that, and all that kind of good right. stuff. He's just putting it on, you know, as as evening wear with his pinstripe suit and uh, swastika yeah. pin. That perfectly fitted pinstripe yeah. suit. I was watching that all through the fight the fight scene yesterday. I wish I had a suit that fit that good. <laughs> it just, you know, I just come across as a, a kind of a, a a cover over a refrigerator. But it he just <laughs> looks suave right to the bit. It really end. does, doesn't he? This was. I'm assuming this was not the pyro. The pyro suit, but it could be the, as 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 it's heading out there. It does look like there's some real. I mean, it doesn't look like animation. It looks like some kind of pyro effect going on. You mean similar as, as he's as South he's East. going out the door? Yeah. Uh, I think that is yeah. That's real pyro effect, and that's a stunt guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, who did who did we talk to uh, Hal that 
was every time that the pyro was being used, we had somebody that was working on it. it was this was mentioned at the South Seas Club? Do you remember? Oh my god! It was someone's yeah. brother. Yeah, there was, um, and that escapes me. I'm sure that all of our all of our finheads out there are screaming. Yeah, somebody's at their, taking uh, better notes than we are, or whatever. <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah, one person did all the all the jobs involving the pyro stuff. Mm. So uh, quite a quite a deal. And of course, I didn't take a note on it. But it, a beautiful scene, nice matching there. Uh, I mean, there's so much going on in, in the one scene with uh, with Timothy as he's as he's diving at the camera. Yeah. You got him. And then the big background of the Luxembourg, and then the the, uh, the giant painting of, uh, I guess they're looking east, east from Los Angeles. I'm trying to figure out where those. Yeah, that's that's the east side of the ho- of Hollywood Hills. That would be uh, look, looking yeah, toward downtown, sort of the looking east, southish, south, south yeah, east. south and east, like like off to the right would be the city or southwest downtown. Yeah, exactly. Off yeah. to the left. Yeah. Oh, off. Oh, okay. Well, so, directly in front of the sign, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And then, of course, speaking of the sign, this is you know one of many times that uh, that we see Hollywood Land become just Hollywood and in, in movies. That's right, and it's become a thing. It really has become a thing. Yeah. What I didn't realize when I was reading a little bit about this, uh, you know, and for those that don't know, Hollywood Land was a housing development, and the sign was originally put up meant to last about eighteen months to promote it, and then it it became a thing and uh, was eventually sort of uh, was restored in the late forties. Um, and that was when they removed the land and just let the sign be a landmark for the for the area. But what I didn't realize was that it was so the way it was lit. There was actually an animation component, so you'd see Hollywood land, and then you would just see Holly, and then wood, and then land lighting up as they flashed in sequence. So, and I was also interested to learn that the uh, Hollywood land sign, uh, letters were a little bit bigger than what we see today. They were uh, they were oh. fifty feet tall versus hmm. something like forty five feet today. So not drastically so, but but yeah. interesting. I can remember back in uh, about nineteen eighty, uh, Universal Studios when when it was just you know and, and when it hadn't become as big a theme park as it was now. It was more like a you know tour of a movie set. Their gift shop they would sell pieces of the original Hollywood sign. Mm. It was like about oh, wow. a, maybe a two by two inch piece, and they were selling them to pay for the rebuilding of the Hollywood sign, which had. Fallen. I mean, it was just basically, you know, painted canvas, and uh, they were putting up a better, more permanent sign. But uh, you could buy big, you know, chunks of the old Hollywood mm. sign depending on, uh, on what, and, you know, how much you wanted. To and spend. it was it must have been around that uh, uh, that same time, I guess, late seventies, maybe nineteen eighty or so, that they were they had celebrity sponsors for the different letters to to re restore it. So you had like <laughs> Hugh Hefner had the Y, Gene Autry had the L. Uh, Alice Cooper had the second O, and it was in memory of of Groucho Marx, who, and they were apparently close friends. Which, to be a fly on the wall in some of those conversations, Alice Cooper was close friends with Groucho that's, uh, Marx. Well, that's uh, yeah. the internet has told me this, Billy, and uh, and as we know, oh, the, well, the the internet never lies. never lies except for frequently, but. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I it just i i want to I want to see that. I want to be I want to be there for that to happen somehow. Alice Cooper no and Groucho kidding. Marx sitting yeah. down and having a conversation. One of my favorite uh, little sayings is that uh, outside of a outside of a dog, a book is a man's best friend. <laughs> Inside of a dog, it's too dark to read. <laughs> they do not make him like that or make him like that anymore. My gosh! No. No. <laughs> Inside of a dog, it's too dark no. to read. I remember if if you go if anybody that lives below the Hollywood sign, there's so many streets that head up toward mm. there. But there's of course none of them. You know they will stop at Griffith Park, but uh, there's it's funny being able to go down any of those neighborhoods and there's the same sign at the end of every street. It said this street does not go to the Hollywood <laughs> sign. <laughs> That's right. Um, I I ran into quite a few of those signs in my time, I'm trying to get to different places. I spent a, some blurry years in beechwood canyon another great memoir title yeah, blurry years another in beechwood canyon blur, blur. it just keeps, <laughs> it, it just writes itself i was trying to remember other other movies where the hollywood land part gets destroyed one of them i can think of is uh the spielberg movie 1941 oh yeah mm-hmm. which by the way oh my goodness how about a movie minute of 1941 oh, that would be, that okay. would be something that would be intriguing uh it it has also one of the funniest um poutiest uh, director's commentary if you ever want to hear a really 
cranky director's commentary. Uh, uh, Spielberg spends most of the time on the commentary complaining about how people don't understand his movies and they they love the, they love his movies in other countries but not in America and they <laughs> it was awful that the critics and the and the audiences didn't understand it here. And it it was a great movie. I thought it was a good movie. I love that movie. I loved it. It's uh, actually the theme of it is uh, John Williams' favorite score of all of the movies that he ever made. He he is enjoys really? the 1941. Really, theme. I never heard that yeah, one. It's a, That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's very stirring. I mean, yeah. if you listen to it on its own, um, I thought I thought it was fantastic. Just from the op- the opening. Well, we can. We, I guess we don't have to do. We don't have to do the 1941 minute here. But uh, I, I do love the opening scene, which uh, recreating uh, Jaws, except that it's the. Uh, it's a Japanese submarine instead of a shark, with with the same actress who played Chrissy in uh, in Jaws. So uh, a clever clever redo of that of that, of that opening. Okay, you got to put that one on my list to watch again. It's been too many years. Yeah, mm, me too. I think me too. Wow. Well, uh, I think you know we have to say we're saying farewell to so many parts of this movie. We so, we we say goodbye to uh, Wooly and Fitch and uh, and Eddie Valentine. And, all those guys. Uh, now we say goodbye to uh, to Neville, and uh, mm. we're down to just the very the very bitter end. But uh, well, not quite the bitter end. We still have a we still have a rooftop and, and some little more mayhem for uh, for for uh, tomorrow and, and so on. But uh, right. we'll we'll get we'll we'll leave uh, we'll leave poor Cliff and Jenny as they try to make their way off the off the top, the roof of the Luxembourg. Uh, we'll we'll pick this all up uh, tomorrow. Uh, for people who would like to join our conversation, we're always available at the usual spots. You know the place: tw- Twitter, Rocket Chair Minute. You can find us Facebook, Facebook dot com slash Rocket Chair Minute. Of course, the great big website, Rocket dot com. Uh, leave messages at the bottom of every single episode. Catch up on previous episodes that you may have missed, and uh, buy cool swag uh, from Amazon. Also, if you haven't uh, subscribed, you've got 10 last episodes you can have delivered directly to your, uh, to your iPhone or wherever you're listening to our, our particular broadcast. Uh, just go to uh, iTunes or Google Play, uh, type in Rocketeer Minute, and when uh, our, our name shows up, click the subscribe button, and you'll get the last 10 hot and fresh uh, first thing in the morning. So uh, do that. Join us back here tomorrow as we watch the uh, continuing misadventures of uh, <laughs> Cliff and Jenny here on the Rocketeer Minute. <laughs> so until next time, over and out. Yeah, over and out, boys. Get him, kid.